Good evening and welcome to Linnell Gymnasium in Saco. Tonight, two and three Thornton Academy facing two and three Lewiston. And joining me tonight in the broadcast booth, a 1985 graduate of Biddeford High School and a 1990 graduate of Bates College in Lewiston, Mike Newman. Mike, glad you could join us tonight up here. Um, tonight, both teams coming in at two and three. Thorn Academy on a two-game winning streak. Lewiston, two and three, but maybe a better team tonight, you feel, than a two and three record shows? I think, yeah, a much better team. They've played a tough schedule in the early going. Uh, they've had some tough games. They lost to Daring in double overtime. Uh, had a vicious comeback. They were down by 14 points in the fourth quarter. They came back, so they are a very, very good team. Uh, Thornton, you know, coming off two wins. This is a big game for them right now. It sure is. We were talking earlier. This may be the first time since my senior year back in 1979 that Thorn Academy has a chance to be even at 500 after more than two games. We were 2-2 two and two to start off the 1979 season. Thorn Academy with a chance to go to 3-3 three and three and pick up a lot of heel points against Lewiston because Lewiston right now ranked number five in the heel point standings. Yeah, this is a real big game. Uh, the two games Thorn won, those are, the, those are games that they have to win. Uh, you got to have a bit, a couple big games a year uh, if you're going to make the tournament. And this is a game that, you know, if Thornton can pull it off, it's going to help them out. Yeah, like in other words, you're saying knock off a team with a lot of points like a Lewiston, possibly squeak out a victory against a Chevrolet or a South Pole, and then beat all the teams, the Massive Essex, the Nobles, maybe even the Sanfords this year. Sanford not doing really that well, although they should be a better team. And it might get yourself an eight or nine spot and a chance for postseason play. Exactly. Two and three, a great crowd on hand over on this side. We got a lot of the home partisan crowd over here. A good night for basketball because you want to be inside a warm gymnasium. Very yeah. cold outside York County. Temperatures down in the single numbers. Two and three, Thorn Academy. Like we said, coming off two wins tonight. Uh, two wins in a row and a good job in the Christmas tournament over in Biddeford. Lewiston, same record, two and three. So a lot on the line for both these teams. We'll be back right after this for tonight's starting lineup in the opening tip-off here on CTV 30. Welcome back to Linnell Gymnasium in Saco. Jay Harper along with Mike Newman, our cameraman tonight, Mark Cantra. Getting set for tonight's action between two and three Thorn Academy and two and three Lewiston Blue Devils. We'll give you tonight's starting lineups. Starting five for Thorn Academy tonight. In the backcourt will be number 12, Craig Agresti. He's a six foot junior. He'll start along with Matt Cook, number 40. Co-captain, 6'1", senior Matt Cook, wearing number 40 tonight. Forwards, the number 42, Shea Demons. He's a senior, six feet tall. And starting along with him will be Guy Langelier, 6'3", senior. And at center tonight, number 32, Jay Lowe, six foot four, junior. Starting for Lewiston tonight, Mike. Starting for Lewiston in the backcourt, we have a six foot senior, Matt Murphy. Along with him, a 5'8", senior, Corey Storer. At the forward positions, we have a six-foot junior, Jason Fuller, a six-four senior, J.P. Fennessy, and starting at center, we have a six-five senior, Joe Levesque. A fairly tall team, Lewiston. Thornton doesn't match up that badly. You have Langelier at six-three and Lowe at six-four, but Lewiston has six-foot-four Fennessy and six-foot-five Levesque, and also coming off the bench, Charlie Duncan, who's six-foot-five, and Duncan's a big kid. And he yeah. can use up a lot of room inside. Lewiston does have a decisive uh, height, advantage, height advantage today. Guy Langelier is going to be a key. He gets a lot of rebounds for Thornton Academy. He's going to have to work, work his butt off on the boards today. Sure is. Along with Jay Lowe, they did a fairly decent job. The only other game we've covered so far this year against Massive Isak. Langelier had the big game. 20 points and numerous offensive rebounds. He had at least six or seven, which was a factor in that contest. Surprising that Lewiston is only two and three, but like we said, they lost the teams like South Portland, Bonnie Eagle, who's been a big surprise to a lot of people. Yes, Some people yeah. say no, that they knew they were gonna be a good team, but Bonnie Eagle having an outstanding season so far, and also losing to Deering, as you said, in double overtime. So that was a game that could have went either way. Thorn Academy did play well to open the year against South Portland before being blown out in the fourth quarter. And then, Got totally annihilated by Bonnie Eagle up there 
in the third and fourth quarter. It was a close game at halftime, but Von Eagle took control in the second half. Very good game, losing 64 to 59 to Chevres, and then two wins in a row, 97 to 70 over Massabesic and 70 to 50 over Noble. And like we said, the Trojans did well in the Christmas tournament over in Biddeford. So I think the key now for Thorne Academy is they know what it feels like to win, so it's something that's not completely foreign to them. They know it feels good, and they think they can go out there and win tonight, so that should be a factor in their favor. That is a factor. They're going to have to get out to a good start. They're going to have to uh, exercise patience on the offensive end, and they're going to have to play tough defense. They can't get down early to a team like Lewiston because Lewiston has the capability of blowing them out. If Thorn comes out with intensity, I think this could be a very good ball game tonight. All right, we hope so. We get set for the tip-off. Two and three, Thorn Academy against two and three, Lewiston. You're watching high school basketball on CTV 30, a BTV sports presentation. Jumping it off is Fennessy and Lowe. Lewiston controls the tip. Murphy brings it down on the left side, and Thorn Academy falls into the zone defense. Quick Ball. turnover by Lewiston. Thorn Academy starts in the zone, and Lewiston putting zone pressure right now, full court. It's in the four court to low, has Cook in the middle. Cook with a J, short, and a rebounded by Lewiston. Murphy with the basketball. Drives inside the zone, looks down low, gets the dish inside, up and in, Joe Levesque. Thorne's going to be plagued with that all day today. They're going to have problems with the inside. They're going to have to really work hard to shut that off. Long pass, overthrown, and it goes out of bounds. Turnover, Thorne Academy. Blue Devils on top, 2-0, and they have the basketball. Corey Storer, number 50 now, brings the ball up court. Over to Murph. Across the corner of Stora. Stora with a J from outside. Short. Rebounded underneath. Fennessy. Fennessy up and in. JP Fennessy. Two quick hoops. Gordon breaks the full court pressure, but they throw it away off Lowe's fingertips. And here comes Stora. Pass inside to Murphy. Murphy goes up. Nice block. Referee thought about calling the foul. Holds off, and Agresti brings it up into the forecourt. Drives the lane up off the glass. He's going to get an offensive. Agresti has a tendency to do that, draw the offensive foul. Yeah, he, he forced that one right there. It was uh, the right idea, but not what they wanted at that point in time. Horn Academy applies full court pressure. And Guy Langelier will pick up his first personal. That's not a bad foul, though. They're being aggressive right now. You, you can't really fault a kid for fouling, for really hustling like that. They'll keep the full court pressure on. Long pass down court, and they break the press. Levesque thinks about it, gets it back outside, and throws it away, and that'll be back court. So both teams having the turnover bug to start this one. Thorne's got to work for a good shot right now. It's important for them to get in the scoring column. Back up top to Demons. Demons comes inside. Jump ball. And the arrow favors Thorne Academy, so they retain possession. Gresty will inbound underneath. Out to Demons, back to Gresty. Gresty fires up from the corner, way off. Rebounded by Stora. Fennessy from outside, long. Rebounded by Murphy, though. Looking underneath for Fennessy, tipped away. Picked up by Levesque, up and in. Joe Levesque, 6'5", senior. And Lewiston throwing a shutout right now, 6 nothing. And they call the holding foul against Stora. As you were saying earlier, Mike, very important, especially now at six, to get some points for Thorne Academy. Yeah, this isn't the start that Thornton really wanted. So far, Thornton really not getting any good quality shots off either. Down low to Langelier. Could be the chance, an overpass. Off the hands of Lowe. Lowe having problems with the basketball play. Nice move by Agresti, and he gets Thornton on the board. 
Full court pressure, Storer trapped in the corner. Gets it off for Fennessy, Fennessy to Murphy. Murphy, Levesque, and Fennessy all coming into the pitcher. Levesque, no good, rebound and low. Gets it off for Langelier. And it's gonna go off Langelier, so say the officials, and Blue Devils basketball. Five twelve left first period. Stone Academy trailing 6-2. Pass stolen by Cook. Comes on to fast break in traffic. Driving the lane, looks for Agresti. Tipped out of bounds by Lewiston. It'll be Thornton's basketball underneath. You think Thornton sometimes forces it when they don't have the men advantage on the fast break? Uh, they have a tendency to get out of control every now and then. They gotta take their time, you know? Work for the good shot. Inbound it's to Demons. Demons looks inside for Langelia, throws it away. Here comes Corey Stora. Stora on the other side to Levesque. Levesque loses control, no good. Rebound to Langelia. Back come the Trojans. Up and down we go. Over to Jay Lowe. Nice pass from Agresti, and the Trojans cut it to two. Cross-court pass now. Fennessy back over to Murphy. Murphy thinks about it. Tipped out of bounds from behind by Cook. It'll be Lewiston's ball underneath. Top to Storer. Storer for Fennessy. Fennessy will try the long range one again. Another air ball. And the crowd loves it on this side. Address the pass. Cook wasn't looking. Goes off Matt Cook's back, out of bounds. Turnover, Houston's basketball. That's a cardinal sin right there, turning your back against the ball. You gotta always know where the ball is on the court. Both teams seem a tad out of sync. Inbound to Murphy. Pass broken up by Lowe. Stora gets it. And he draws the offensive foul. Matt Cook, good position. Stora with a rebound, drove hard against Cook, and he picks up the offensive foul. Both teams do seem to have the uh, early game jitters. This is a very important game for both, being a two and three. Coach Dolliff for Lewis and making a couple of substitutions. In now is number 42, Maury Fontaine. Long pass down for Cook. Cook way underneath, and he misses it. And it goes off Matt Cook as he stood out of bounds. It'll be Lewiston's basketball. Fontaine checks in along with number 12, Jeff Grenier. Long pass down to Levesque. Levesque pulls up, gets it over for Grenier. Grenier will take his first shot into the game and he misses. Rebounded by Cook off to Agresti. Agresti driving the paint, dishes. And they're gonna call another offensive foul against Agresti. Late, late whistle, but Agresti did Cause the contact. That's his second personal, too. In both offensive fouls, so. Coach Ganyu might have to look for a substitution for Agresti. Two quick fouls early first quarter. Trapped in the corner is Murphy. Breaks through, throws it off for Grenier. Grenier gets it up for Fontaine. Fontaine down low to Murph, all alone. Up and in. Blue Devils on top now, eight to four. Full court pressure, inbounded to Langelier, back for Demons, and they cross the timeline. Cook drives the side, loses control. Down low for Langelier, nice pass. Gets the foul in the basket. Tough move by Guy Langelier. Used his body well on that one. And a perfect pass from outside by Matt Cook. They were fronting the man, he just lobbed it over the front. Langelier able to gather it in. Get the foul in the bucket. Timeout Lewiston with 3.13 left. Blue Devils on top, 8-6. You're watching high school basketball on CTV 30. Well, like you said, Mike, so far both teams with jitters, but they're showing glimpses of coming out of it. They gotta just relax and play their style of basketball right now. Yeah, each team has. Uh, once, once we get a little further into the game, I think we're gonna see a very good ball game. Two and three, Thorne has a lot to gain as far as heel points. 
because Lewiston has a lot right now in the season with their two nice wins. Thorn Academy, on the other hand, two and three. Not a lot of points in the offering for Lewiston, but still a game they have to win to get themselves going on their schedule. Get back to 500, get their confidence rolling, right. and get them down the line further. All right, Lewiston breaks out with their two substitutions still in, Fontaine and Grenier. Murphy, Levesque, and Fennessy. Thorn Academy now into the lineup. Brent Raymond, number 44. I believe Mike LaBelle's checked in the lineup as well. Giving Craig Agresti the rest with the two fouls. Angelier hits the free throw, so. Thorn Academy has cut it to a one-point ball game. Number 50, Steve Xanthopoulos has just entered the game for Thornton Academy, replacing Guy Langelier. X-Man underneath, only a sophomore, big kid. Did well in the junior varsity game. Rebound underneath, Lebec takes it away from Xanthopoulos and puts it back up and in. And Lewiston on top, 10-7. Raymond, cross-court pass, dangerous. Nice play by Cook. Over for LaBelle, LaBelle takes from the corner, misses, and rebounded by Murphy. Murphy gets it up for Fennessy, stolen by Cook. Cook's got a two on one. Pulls up, then passes across, nice play by Grenier. Breaks it up, then knocks it off LaBelle out of bounds. Very nice defensive play. Cook waited a little too long to get the pass over to LaBelle. He should have, at that point, pulled up and took in the J. Pass overthrown, picked up by Raymond. Turnover, Lewiston. 2.21 left. First quarter, 10-7 game. Demons drives the paint. Locked, but he draws the foul. He'll get two from the stripe. Thorne Academy was very proficient in that game against Massabesic that we covered from the free throw line. That win, that, that wins and you win and lose ball games from the free throw line. If you can make your free throws at, at clutch times and throughout the ball game, you're gonna win much more than you're gonna lose. Coaches always try to stress that, but some teams just aren't able to relax at the line. Lone Academy this year doing very well as Demons hits the first. As we mentioned, Thorne Academy won the JV game tonight against Lewiston in double overtime, 75-73. A game they were way ahead on, Lewiston rallied Sent it to overtime and then took two overtimes, but Thornton Academy comes away with a W. 10-9. Thornton Academy in a 1-3-1 zone right now. LaBelle out front. Santhopoulos, the low man underneath. Into Levesque. Levesque's J, good. Nice little jump up from 12 feet. That's where the 1-3 that's where the one three zone is. is you had your problems. Right at, the, right at the foul line, right at the seam. Raymond breaks the press. Pulls up, takes the J. Going to be long. Rebound off. Picked up by Fontaine. Blue Devils bring it up court. Grenier back to Fontaine. In the paint to Levesque, and Levesque's heating up right in that zone where you said, Mike, two quick ones. And Lewis it up by five. And Coach Mark Gagne calls the timeout with his Trojans down by five, 14-9. A minute 35 left, first quarter. You're watching high school basketball on CTV 30. Mike Newman, a former Thorne Academy basketball player for one year, his sophomore year played here, then moved over to Biddeford and played for Coach Ron Cody over there for two seasons, and then on to Bates College, where he graduated last year. Kind of a weird thing, moving from Thorne to Biddeford, something you don't see too often. What was your thinking back then, Mike, when you made that move? Well, it was, it was a tough move at the time. Uh, I did it. Basically for a little exposure, uh, so I, I, I wanted to play college basketball. I did, in fact, play college basketball at Bates. Uh, I, right now, I, I don't regret the move. I made a lot of friends along the way. And it was tough the first year, you know, a lot of friction between my f old friends from Saco and, and, you know, the, my new friends that I met at Biddeford. Must have been an adjustment, but getting to play for someone like Ron Cody must have been a great experience for you. Oh, it was. He's a great motivator, and uh, he's, a, he's a great guy as well. One of the finest coaches I've, you know, been around in, in my day. So how is it now to make the adjustment after college basketball? Now it's all over. Has it been tough for you? Uh, it has been an adjustment period, but 
I enjoy watching it right now. All right, Trojans with the basketball, trying to cut the lead. Santhopoulos in the middle, no good. Lowe's fights for it. Ball still loose. Santhopoulos on the floor, gets knocked down. And they're going to give it to Lewis, and Murphy could have drawn a foul there. And Lewis comes away with the basketball with the five point lead. Pass into Levesque, back to Murphy. Murphy brings it up rapidly, comes down and draws the foul against Cook. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Now you got to play your college ball in Lewiston, Team Thornton playing tonight. How was that as far as a basketball town? Uh, as far as the college one or the high school? College. Well, we had a great home quarter, old, old gymnasium, and when we packed it in, it, it, was, it was a great home court advantage. Alumni gymnasium, uh, we got it rocking. You know, we played the, when we played the Colbys, the Bowdens, the USMs, we could, we could pack the place. All right, Murphy makes them both. 16-9 now, Blue Devils. Cook in the paint, rolls around the rim, no good. Rebounded by Levesque, gets it off for Fontaine. North Academy. Can't find the hole. Fontaine drives the lane, sneaks inside. They're going to call travel. Nice move otherwise, but he just dragged that pivot foot as he went up. Corn Academy gets the ball on the turnover. Trailing by seven. 53 seconds left, first quarter. It's important for Thorne to get a good shot right now. They don't want to be down by more than they are right now. Trapped in the corner. Raymond has to put it up, and it's good. Looked like it tipped the side of the backboard and went in. Not the shot they were looking for, but if it falls, we'll take it. Exactly. 16-11, 36 seconds left. Lewiston might play for the last shot here. Murphy drives inside, dish down low, nice pass, and it's good. Number 34, Jason Fuller getting his first bucket of the night. Great running back for Lewiston. Gresty down low, great pass to J-Lo. And two more for Thornton, they answer right back. 12 seconds left. Lewiston undoubtedly now will go for the last shot. Grenier looks to the corner, Murphy, down to five. Murphy driving the paint, comes inside, nice move, switches to the right hand and gets the foul with two seconds left. Strong move by Matt Murphy. Tough play, left-hander driving the paint. Gets inside, switches over to the right hand, and picks up the foul with only two seconds to go. Not much really, though, Thornton could do defensively. No, it was a great move. First shot way off by Murphy. And he takes a second off to the side. Cook knocks it out of bounds, so no damage done in that last play. At the end of one quarter, Lewiston Blue Devils 18, Thorne Academy Golden Trojans 13. You're watching high school basketball on CTV 30. Linnell Gymnasium in Saco. Jay Harp along with Mike Newman, our cameraman tonight, Mark Cantor, watching Lewis and Blue Devil cheerleaders down at half court entertaining us. Not the best of shots looking at their back, but we'll take it. Can't complain. Any surprises in that first quarter for you, Mike? Not really. I, th I think Thornton played them about like I expected. Uh, they got to come out. They played very intensely last quarter. They settled down early on this quarter. I think they, they'll be all right. Both teams a little sporadic in their play. Thorn Academy will start the second quarter defensively. Lewis and inbound at half court. Fennessy gets it into Murphy, and we start the second quarter. Pass in the corner. Fennessy back for Levesque. Levesque. Kind of trap, feels around, nice low pass, and a jump ball, good play, but the arrow now has gone back to Thorne Academy, so they'll get the basketball. Lewiston stays with their full court pressure. 
Resting now on top. Lewiston stays in their man-to-man -man defense. Cook drives lane. Pulls up. Nice J by Matt Cook. Stora trapped in the corner. He loses it. Thorne applying the defensive pressure, causing the turnovers. Shea Demons will inbound. 18-15 now. It's trapped. Got to call a timeout here. Just beat that five-second. Cook takes the J short. Langelier there for the rebound. Long. Another rebound. Langelier. Second shot. No good. Langelier again. And he gets it. Padding his offensive rebounds and finally puts it home. Guy Langelier working extremely hard on the boards. Cut the margin to one now. Here comes Murphy. He throws it away. Another turnover for Lewiston. As they come out a little stale to start the second quarter. Run Academy with a chance to take the lead. First time tonight. Pass stolen by Murphy. He gets it back. Drives the paint. No good. Tap behind by Levesque. Nice play on the boards. Comes up strong. And he gets it to fall. Joel Levesque working hard on the offensive boards. Matt Cook looks inside for J. Lowe. J. Lowe over to Langelier. Maybe an extra pass. Langelier comes away with it. Agresti will take it from outside. It's long in the corner. Tough call by the official there. From our vantage, looked like that was Lewiston's basketball. Low look to knock it out of bounds. Thorne definitely got a break there. 6.31 left. Resty drives the paint, pulls up. It's short. They're going to call a foul against Levesque, number 44. Both teams in the penalty now, so... Langelier will go to the line, shooting one-on-one. -on -one. Fuller comes back in, replacing Matt Murphy. Langelier misses. Devin's rebounds, though. Back on top for Matt Cook. He'll pull up, take the J. Swish. Pretty. Out of bounds, Lewiston loses it again. Thornton definitely playing inspired ball right now. Matt Cook has a hot hand, and they're just playing great ball right now. Matt Cook has a beautiful jumper. I love the way he pulls up, gets great elevation off the court, gets high in the air, and just when he's on, he's on from outside. He's very nice form. Road Academy, a couple of big turnovers picking up there as their full court pressure is starting to pay off. Thorn Academy, a team who has not traditionally pressed, their, has, their press has been very effective tonight. This is true. Over the years, I can't remember a team from Thorn Academy maintaining full court pressure for entire ball games for entire seasons. And so far, Coach Gagne has pretty much stayed with the full court pressure all year. Thorn Academy with a second chance now to take the lead. Last time they blew the opportunity with a quick turnover, but trailing by one. And the basketball, a chance to go on top for the first time. Reminder to tune in to Harper Sports Talk Wednesdays at 5.30 now for the winter schedule. Each week, a new guest, new topics. Okay, aggressive will inbound. Can't find it, but he gets it in for Langelier. Langelier back for Agresti now. Now for Cook. Cook inside the paint, jumper short. Rebounded by Levesque. Levesque, an elbow, no call, and he dribbles it out now. Looking for Fennessy, finds him. Fennessy out of control. Off the backboard, he gets it back. Stolen by Agresti. And here come the Trojans. Dribbling in pressure, Stora takes it back. And here comes the Blue Devils. Stora wisely pulls up now to set up the offense. And he throws it away, stolen by Matt Cook. Things get really sloppy. He dribbles it away. Stora back with it. Down to Fuller. Fuller inside, up and in. Exciting one minute of basketball. Not the prettiest, but exciting. Exciting, exciting yes. A little bit sloppy, though. And another turnover. Matt Cook stationary. As Craig Agresti led him with the pass. 
Kirk was caught flat-footed, and Lewiston picks up the turnover. Lone Academy can't take advantage of the chance to get on top. And now down court, Fontaine over for Fuller. Fuller in and out. Misses with the left hand, blows the bunny. Got to have those. Those will drive coaches crazy. Shea Demons pulls up now. Off the window and in. Beautiful. Patented Shea Demons type shot. Did he call that one? I think so. Here comes Stora, two on one. Jay Lowe kicks it out of bounds. Good defensive play. Lewiston had the two on one break. Lowe held his ground and made the quick pad save Jeff Marston style. And keeps Thornton only by the one point deficit, 22-21. Shot inside by Levesque. Another chance, he goes for a third. No, sir. And Craig Agresti tries to get possession. He can't. It'll be Lewiston's basketball. Partisan crowd trying to get Lord Academy pumped up on the D. Murphy on top, going in the zone. Fennessy tries to drive the zone, can't. Murphy in the corner, back to Fennessy. Fennessy likes to drive the baseline, and this time it pays off as he picks up a pair. 24-21, Blue Devils on top. Pass over for Demons. He's trapped in the paint. Throws it up off the glass. No good. Rebound Wild by shot. Levesque. Here comes Levesque leading the break. Down the corner for Murphy. Murphy down on the baseline. Nice play by Langelier. And Agresti picks up the loose ball. And here he comes. Back is Levesque. Nice play, Agresti. He'll get the bucket and a foul. Going against big number 44, Joe Levesque. Six foot five. And Craig Agresti. Craig Agresti, after picking up those two early offensive fouls, utilized his body very well that time. Nice drive, didn't force the issue, threw the foul, got the ball to fall, rolled around the rim, and he'll get a chance to tie this game up. 3.44 left, second quarter. No good, Trojans cannot get themselves a tie or a lead. Stora gets it into the forecourt. Fennessy on top. He loves those threes. I wonder if he'll make one. Rebounded, though, by the Blue Devils. Back for Murphy. He throws one off the glass, and I don't think that one was called. But Lewiston will take it. 26-23 now. Long pass down for Xanthopoulos. Inside, nice move, but it won't fall. Back out, Langelier with the offensive rebound. Nice fake. Up, rolling, rolling, yes! Guy Langelier again off the offensive boards. He's their workhorse. Back in for Murphy. Murphy with a nice dish down to Fontaine, and Fontaine picks up his first two of the night. Good pass from Murphy, unselfish basketball. Resty now to the X-Man. Stolen away, though, by Fennessy, and here he comes, leading the break. Aaron pass by Steve Xanthopoulos. Murphy for a tray, in and out. Rebounded, Langelier, nice board. No foul call there, wow. Langelier. They're letting him play. Good job keeping possession, Langelier, and getting it off to Agresti. Inside pass, there again, the overpass, and it's taken away by Jason Fuller. Gets it off for J.P. Fennessy, down to Matt Murphy. The Murph man looks across court, Fuller. Back to Storer. Lewiston moving the ball nicely. Inside pass, alley -oop, no pass. good. Inside fighting is Fennessy, blocked in there by the Trojans. Fuller takes it, in and out, offensive foul. Fuller used the hand to push off, and the official with a good call underneath. Lewiston worked the ball nicely, good offensive work, but they couldn't get the ball to fall. Thorne Academy hung tough underneath with a couple of nice blocks. Coach Gandhi now brings in LaBelle. Sits down Cook for his, his first rest of the evening. 
Resty in trouble, stolen away, over to Fuller. Fuller goes in for two. Resty dribbled himself into a host of Lewiston defenders, and they took it away and converted it into an easy bucket. Turnovers are costly. Angelier on top. Long shot outside and short. And Lewiston now controlling the defensive boards. And they come up with a chance to go up by seven. Stora thinks about the three, gives it up. Cross court to Murphy. Murphy back to Stora. Fennessy, another three try. He must be good from out there. As I was saying, he finally makes one because that's about his fifth try. And he's one for five on the night, but a big three for the Blue Devils. And they go on top 33 25. Cohen's got to regroup right now. Santopoulos can't get a bucket to fall underneath. And Shea Demons took a big hit. He's down on the court. Didn't see. Didn't see who ran into Demons. Maury Fontaine, I believe, number 42 for Lewiston. Devin's still down. Maybe just loss of air. Hopefully that's all it is. But the Blue Devils continue to uh, control the defensive boards now the last few minutes. And Thorne Academy having some good shots, but just can't get them to fall. They're missing those bunnies. They get, those are very important shots. Santhopoulos had a couple of nice chances. Both times it looked like possible foul against Lewiston. As you said, the officials kind of letting them play right now. Didn't get the foul to, to be whistled, and Lewiston away with a rebound and back up court. Well, Thorne's going to be getting those shots all game. Right now, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. They're eight points down. we got a minute to go on the half. As being Thorne Academy, they'd like to have it six or less at halftime. Then they regroup, and they come out fighting the second half. And that's what you try to do is a team is set goals, you know, to keep it within this framework and you're still in good shape. And it helps you psychologically if you can keep it under a certain margin. And I agree, a 6.1 would be good for them if they keep it six or under. But as I was saying, Fantasy must be good from the three-point range. He's taken five and he finally hit that last one as I was saying it, because you don't keep throwing those up and miss as badly as he has, unless you are good from out there. Well, he, he obviously is a shooter because he, he's, He's shooting them all right. Uh, the name sounds awful familiar. His brother played for Lewiston a few years back. He was a very good shooter. He went on to play for USM, so I think he might just be having an off night. Exactly. He's got the ball on top now. Over in the corner for Fontaine. Back out for Stora, 50 seconds. Inside pass knocked away by the Trojans, and after they let him play for a while, they call a foul like that. 45 seconds left, first half. And Jason Fuller will go to the line shooting one and one. Fuller, an exceptional running back for the Lewiston Blue Devils. And a very good year for Lewiston as they lost in the playoffs to Chevres. Free throw comes up short. LaBelle tips it around and gains control in the corner. Off for Agresti, so here's our chance with 38 seconds left in the half. Down by eight, a chance to cut it to six. Long pass for Raymond. Raymond trapped a little bit. Throws it away, stolen by Murphy. Good defense, lead pass for Fontaine. Tapped away by Agresti. In that, in that instance, Craig Agresti's gotta go get the ball. He's the floor general, he's gotta run the show. 25 seconds to go in the half, they gotta get a good shot off. That's when, that's when the point guard has to take control of the game. Stora in the paint. Turn around, lefty jumper, pretty. And now it's a 10-point game with 16 seconds left. Now you definitely need a bucket before the half. Down to Langelier. Langelier inside, throws it up. Xanthopoulos with the rebound. Can't get it to fall. Another one, yes, with a second to go, and that's going to do it. A big bucket before the half. Well, at the end of the first half, Lewiston Blue Devils 35, Thorn Academy Golden Trojans 27, and Mike right there, Xanthopoulos, the first chance, rolled out again on him, but he 
stood hard on the boards, got the rebound and put it back up and in. That's got to be a big bucket for him and the team. That's a, that's a confidence booster right there. Second effort, second, third effort. He missed a few bunnies earlier in, the, in that quarter. Uh, that's, a, that's a good bucket for him and for Thorne Academy to end the half. Now you were saying the six point deficit was what they're looking for, but being down 10, cutting to eight with just a second to go, that's got to be a morale booster for Thorne Academy. Oh, sure. I mean, you know, you shoot for the six, eight points, that's just another bucket. And, and with the three-pointer uh, in high school nowadays, that, that margin's n not very significant at all. All right, you're watching High School Basketball on CTV 30. Mike Newman along with Jay Harper and our cameraman Mark Cantor. We're going to take a short pause and come back with a little more halftime and then third and fourth quarter of this basketball game. We're back right after this. Welcome back once again to Linnell Gymnasium. Things have calmed down slightly up here in the broadcast booth. Being joined tonight by Mike Newman, Jay Harp along with you on CTV 30. Scoring in the first half, pretty balanced for both teams. The big leading scorer in tonight's contest, number 44, six foot five, Joe Levesque for Lewis in 12 points. Balancing out Lewis in scoring, JP Fennessy had seven with one tray. Matt Murphy, six, Jason Fuller, six, and Corey Storer and Aaron Fontaine both chipped in with two. For Thorne Academy, Mike, we had a little bit of balance too and not that much scoring, really. Not really. Guy Langelier led the way with seven points. Then Craig Agresti had four. Jay Lowe, Matt Cook, and Shea Demons all threw in four apiece. Brent Raymond and Steve Xanthopoulos ended the list with two apiece. All right, we start the third quarter. 35-27, Lewiston on top. Thorne Academy had four players with four points. And then Raymond and Xanthopoulos off the bench with a bucket apiece. Fantasy across court. Covered quickly over there. And now Storer with the basketball. Back for Fennessy. Tries another tray. Yes. And as you pointed out, probably just started cold as he starts to heat up. Two threes in a row. Well, they always tell shooters to keep shooting. You know, you're going you're gonna to finally get your rhythm. And it looks like Mr. Fennessy has found his rhythm. He's got 10 now on the evening. On the other hand, it uh, looks like we need, Craig Agresti's going to have to pick up the pace uh, on Thornton's end. If he can get a hot hand. Short on the three. Just as you said, he takes the three, but comes up short. He's been a big scorer for them in, in, in the past, and he's going to pick it up right now. Nice pass inside to Lowe, but he misses the bunny. And Lewison with an 11-point lead and the basketball. Matt Murphy works it up court. Good pressure by Agresti. Over to Levesque. Levesque drives the baseline, pulls up to Jay Short. Low rebounds and a foul against Lewiston. Good call underneath by the official. Lowe got hit on the hand as he made the rebound. It's important for Thorne right now not to try to get it all back at once. they got to exercise patience on offense and chip away at this Lewiston lead. Agresti brings it into the forecourt. Lewiston kind of now moves into a man-to-man -man zone pressure, like a matchup zone defense. Trying to confuse Thorne Academy a little bit. Shea Demons back in now. Gresty on top, down in the corner to Cook. Inside pass for Demons. Demons, nice turnaround, in and out. Langelier, the offensive rebound, and he gets fouled. I think 42 Fontaine will pick up the personal, and it is. Guy Langelier sneaking in the paint again. Good offensive rebound. Nice play for Demons, just couldn't get it to fall. As has been the case for a lot of Thornton shots tonight. Angelia rolls that one in. And the margin cut to 10. Shot no good, but Lowe gets the offensive rebound. Back on top for Cook, just inside the three line, no good. Rebound over there, picked up by Fuller. Fuller off of Fennessy, now to Murphy. Murphy two on one, wide open is Fontaine, and he picks up the bucket. Thorne's gotta get back on defense a little bit quicker than that. Very slow getting back that time. Demons now over to Cook in the corner, thrown away. And the Trojans fall apart as they have for a couple of games this year. Played a good first half and then gone to pieces. Opening up the second half, they did that against Bonnie Eagle. 
Cook tries to steal, but he loses it. Fuller has it. Three on one. Back to Stora. Stora with a J. Yes. He's got, a, he's got a great jump shot, Stora. Thornton, that's a timeout that Thornton needs. They got to regroup and talk about this. Certainly do. Lewiston Blue Devils now on top, 42-28. Leading by 14 with 6.16 left, third quarter. They ballooned their eight-point lead at the half now, 2-14. And the Trojans in disarray on the offense. Both teams came out shaky to start the game. Thornton again is coming out shaky this half. Lewiston's come out very strong. I'm surprised Corey Storer had only two points in the first half. I remember seeing him in the tournament last year, I think it was, maybe even the year before that he played for Lewiston, that uh, he has a great jump shot, good pull up, gets good height, and he shoots with that left hand, which surprises people sometimes. They expect the right hand J, and then he comes up on the left, and nice touch. If you give him the J, he's gonna take it, but he's more of a, he's more of a playmaker. He's gonna he'll shoot his fantasy. He's got two big guys, Levesque inside. He's gonna look to pass them the ball. If you give him the J, though, he'll take it and hit it. All right, Thorn Academy's timeout been talked over. They bring the ball up court. Simmons had Agresti, wouldn't get it back to him. Trying to find Agresti maybe for a three. Agresti drives in, pulls up with a J, nice. Nice move by Craig Agresti right there. Let's see if they can get that full court pressure they had working for them in the second quarter. Murphy trying to dribble out. It's an off for Fennessy. Fennessy breaks it. Drives, dribbles back out. Out of control, but he gets all over for a store, a store to Murphy. Murphy thinks about it, passing the paint to Corey. Rolls out, rebound in there, fighting for his low. Back in, though, to Fontaine. Kicked out of bounds by Matt Cook. Just a tough turn of events. That's one thing you never want to do, though. You never want to save the ball underneath your opponent's basket, because if, if they catch the ball, it's a layup. It's two points. Exactly. And you're taught that but sometimes you just don't realize it and do it automatically. Rebounded by Cook. Cook brings it up on the break. Inside pass, knocked out of bounds by Jason Fuller. It'll be T.A.'s ball underneath. Plenty of time to go, plenty of time. Burn has to make every possession though really count for him. Off the glass, no good. Rebounded by Fuller, great position underneath. See, Thornton right now, they're only getting one shot. You know, they're not getting on the offensive boards like they were earlier. And that hurts them. Lewiston working against the zone now. Murphy looking inside. Back on top for Fennessy. Now to Stora, down low to Murph. Murph fakes, pulls up, uses the right hand. <laughs> Great save underneath, but it goes back court. What a super play by Fontaine. Good hustle, good hustle. Jumped up and threw it between his legs. All our Andre Agassi in tennis threw the legs with a shot. Made the save that way. Looked pretty, but it doesn't work. Trojans have the ball, a chance to cut it to 10. Back for Cook to Agresti. Looks like they're trying to get it in the hands of Agresti for an outside shot. Demons gets mugged. And he'll go to the line for two. Nice pump bait. Pump fake by Shea Demons. He drew the foul very nicely there. Couple of big free throws now. Trailing by 12. 4.33 left. Third quarter. You're watching high school basketball on CTV 30. Two and three. Thorn Academy facing two and three. Lewiston. Heel points and a 500 record on the line. Demons converts the first. And a big chance for Thornton to get a little momentum going. This would be their third win in a row, which we haven't seen in these parts for, for quite some time. That is for sure. Nice pass over to Fennessy, drives the lane for two. Good work by the Lewiston Blue Devils. They move the basketball quickly, and it pays off for an easy bucket. J. Lowe inside the paint, swish. Nice pass from Demons. Fennessy on the wing, pulls up for the tray. Yes! Well, they say his foot was inside. They only give him the two. Dolph, coach of Lewiston, looks at the official with a big grin saying, ah, that was close. Langelier underneath, he draws the foul. 
he'll get two shots. So it's obvious that JP Fantasy is an excellent three-point shooter as he's converted three now. He's got himself 15 points. Picked up a quick eight in the second half. Angelia for two. And he rolls it in again. Nice shooter's touch. Generous roll. Each free throw becomes that much more important for Thornton now. And the lead now cut to 11. Full court pressure. Quick work, Grenier up to Fontaine. Over to Fuller. Fuller pulls it up, sets up the offense, packed go for Fennessy, another tray. Oh my, he's unconscious now. He missed four to start and then he's hit four in a row. Gotta get a hand in his face, he's gonna hit that all day. Langelier inside, won't fall. And Lewiston threatens to break this one wide open. 49-35 advantage. Down low for Stora. Stora pulls up with a J. In and out. Rebound being fought for, and they call the foul against Negresti. His third personal. Either team over the limit yet. Actually the first team foul against Thornton here in the third quarter. Grenier on top, looking for the corner for Fennessy, throws it out of bounds. If this turns into a blowout, people who didn't see this game will think, you know, Lewiston just a much better team, but you can see Thornton just a couple of shots from falling in and out, and Lewiston starting to get things to fall for him. It could be very close right now, but Thornton just unable to have those little ones fall for him. Cross court now pass. Nice pick up by Fuller. Misses the bunny though, and rebounded by Lowe. Low off for Demons. Thornton looking to break. Now they slow it up. Gresty drives. Pass inside off low. And here comes Grenier. Grenier wisely pulls up. 14 point lead, no need to rush things. Story inside, in and out again. All alone over there though is Jason Fuller, but he misses. Tapped up, no good, and rebounded by Jason Lowe. Lewiston really blew some chances there. Demons with the basketball. Inside pass, tough pass, stolen by Fuller. Here comes Grenier. Got Store on the other side. Store the lefty, no good. Grenier fighting with Cook, Cook takes it away. Long court pass down for Langelier. And he comes in for the easy bucket. Thornton staying alive. Lewiston's keeping him in the game right now. They've missed two or three bunnies right in a row. And that's the case. Definitely not Thornton keeping themselves alive. Lewiston is by missing numerous bunnies the last couple times up the court. Basketball's a game of momentum and streaks, you know. And Thornton right now needs to have momentum swing to their side, make a little run at these guys. Again. If you're setting a plateau before the end of the third quarter, you'd like to have it at 10, maybe eight. Pass inside for Levesque. And after a long rest on the bench, he's back in and fresh for a quick pair. Back to 14. Demons looking, over for Agresti. Agresti now a little gun shy after missing a couple. Over to Cook. Cook fakes, now goes up with it. Nice jumper from the corner. Minute left, 51-39. Blue Devils on top. They have the ball. Thorne's got to pick up the intensity a notch here. Cook on Grenier. Now Fuller with the basketball. Back off for Murphy. Lewiston using the clock. Thorne's indeed tired, you can tell. Their hands are down. Not as active as they were earlier. Lewiston seems to be wearing them down. It is starting to become apparent. Coach Dalloway using his bench a little more frequently than the Trojans. And we're working the clock now, we're down to 25. Grenier almost loses it, throws it in the corner, and it is stolen away by Demons. Trying to get control, he's gonna pull it up. He does, looking for help. Gets it off for Grenier, he gets fouled from behind by Matt Murphy. And that should put him into the bonus. So 
So it is, yes, fifth foul against Lewiston. We'll have a one and one. Shea Demers a chance to cut it to 10. 20 seconds left. If they could hold that, it would be a big plus on their side. And maybe that little momentum that they need going into the fourth and final quarter. Coach Gandhi now brings in Xanthopoulos and Brent Raymond, replacing Langelier and Jay Lowe. Demons converts the front end, big free throw. Misses the second, rebounded by Levesque. Almost a double dribble, but pulls the hand away just in time, and the big guy plays point guard up top. Now getting it off for Murphy. Murphy to Fontaine. Houston waiting for the last shot. Fuller will take it, and he misses it at the buzzer. Good work, he had the open 12-footer, but he misses, and at the end of three quarters, Lewiston 51, Thorn Academy 40. You're watching high school basketball on CTV 30. All right, Mike, you're Coach Ghani right now. You're sending your troops out for the fourth and final quarter, down by 11. What do you tell your kids on the bench? Well, you gotta tell them, you know, they, they gotta reach deep down itself, inside themselves. They gotta give it all they got right now. Uh, they've stayed in the zone predominantly all the, the entire game thus far. I would think if they get down a couple more baskets, they're gonna have to come out and get them and play man-to-man -man and, and really go full court man-to-man. -man. Would you? Advise your team to start taking the chance and throwing up a couple of threes? Not yet, not yet. I, I think it's eight minutes is a lot of time. It's still still a little too early for that. Uh, you know, Craig Agresti's struggled from the three-point line today. What he needs to do is he needs to stake a, take a step in, stick that 15-foot J, then take a step back and hit the three-point shot. Needs a confidence booster, exactly. something to get him going. All right, Trojans, start the fourth with the basketball. Cook looking for help. Gets it for Demons. Demons inside, though, out of control, and he throws it away. Aaron pass by Shea Demons. Levesque brings it up behind him. Fennessy, you want to get on him even that far out. He's proven himself. And a walk. The thing that I see Thornton do too often is come up court and not get a shot off. I mean, you want to take a good shot, but you want to get a shot. Yeah. Sometimes they turn it over before they take the shot. Right, you want to... Obviously, each time you go down the court, you want to get a shot off because the more shots you take, the more the more points you you have a chance of scoring in a game. Langelier now in the corner, back to Agresti. Back to Langelier, inside to Raymond. Raymond thinks about it, gets caught inside and stepped out of bounds with the basketball. Langelier is a good outside shooter. He shoots in their three-point, uh, two-man hoops that they do at halftime. He's a great outside shooter. Why he doesn't take the 14-footer, I don't know. Nice fast break for Lewiston, and Levesque puts it in for the bunny, and a 13-point lead once again. Cresty drives the baseline, pulls up, partially blocked. Rebounded nicely inside by Matt Murphy. Murphy getting a lot of rebounds. He's their guard, but he is a big guard at 6'1", 6'2", and he's doing a good job on the boards. No good rebounded by Xanthopoulos. Trojans come back with it. Gresti pulls up. No good, Raymond tips it out, and Stora picks it up, and back come the Blue Devils. Tennessee tips inside, stolen away by Xanthopoulos. Cook picks up the loose ball. Cook's got the left lane, drives inside, goes up, tapped away, still loose. Fighting for it, Langelier and Fennessy, and Fennessy comes out with it. Nothing going the Trojans' way. Nice pass for Levesque, but he walked with it. Great pass, though. This game is certainly not over yet, but Time is running out, and Thornton really needs to mount a run right now. This is 
exactly. They got to take their first five or six points off the board, get it to within an eight point game, and then make that final run right at the end of the game. And that hook hits the 14 footer from the corner. That's a start right there. Now they got to play the solid D. They go to man to man. Bresti on store. Down low for Levesque, being guarded by Lowe. Murphy comes inside, uses the right hand pretty, but he can't get it to fall. Back inside, Fennessy, up and in. JP Fennessy, good work. Fennessy's having himself a second half. He's having himself a game. Sure is, after a very slow start. Didn't even look like he belonged on the court. He's proven himself here. Bresti tries a three, no good. Rebound underneath, Demons. Demons fakes all alone, up and in. Back to 11. Tennessee down low for Levesque. Levesque inside, no good, gets his own rebound. Up, foul from behind. Oh, that's a tough call, real tough call. And it looks like they're whistling it on Agresti, the off man. So that's a problem Thorne's gonna have with switching to man to man. Lewiston does have a decisive height advantage, and this big mismatch is down low. But that's what you have to do at this point, this stage in the game. Sacrifice a little bit of rebounding for some pressure and a chance at a couple of turnovers. Back with a free throw, calmly sinks it. Now this, this kid at the foul line, as I understand, uh, Joe Levesque has already uh, applied for early decision with a at MIT and he's been accepted. So I guess he's going to play basketball next year at, with, at MIT in Massachusetts, which Big is a very kid. good school. Big kid and a good school for academics. Lewiston misses the second, but they get the rebound and Levesque with another chance. Low with the rebound though. 12 point lead, now a chance to cut it to 10. Up for Agresti. Agresti being double covered. Drives the paint, nice pass across for Langelier. Langelier gets fouled, no call. Blatant no call right there. And maybe a makeup call with the foot on the line. The I official that's knew he did that one. That's exactly what that was. Langelier got hammered as he took the shot. He knew he missed it. Demons drives the paint now. Up, no good. Shea Demons usually gets them to fall. Tonight he can't buy a hoop. Thorn Academy ball. Made a mistake. I think he meant to go the other way, and now he corrects it. And the right call there was off a Thornton player. 4.16 left, 56-44. Having problems thrown away. Over to Agresti. Agresti with a left hand, pretty, and it's a 10-point game. Four minutes to go, a chance now for the Trojans. They got to dig in on the D. But here comes a break for the Blue Devils. Stora pulls up, yes. Big, big jump shot right there. Quick answer back by Lewiston, and a 12-point game once again. Demons in the corner for Agresti, he thinks about the three. Passes it up, now for Lowe. Lowe back for Demons, Demons won't take it, and he walks with the ball. And after he walks, he finally gets one to go off that window and in. It's not the Trojans' night tonight. Pressure in the corner, Fennessey tries to dribble out of it, pulls up now, gets it off for Murphy. They gotta be concerned with the time now. 10 points, 10 seconds, and they get it over. Nice pass underneath for Fennessy, but he misses it. Lebec fighting hard. Nice block by J. Lo, but they call the foul. As J. Lo got aggressive, a little upset. They made a nice block, but must have got him with the body. 3.28 left. Lewiston still leads by 12. Well, as we can see, the fans haven't given up yet. <laughs> They're still pumped for being on camera at halftime. <laughs> Levesque makes them both. Matt Cook tries to come down. Off for Demons, Demons outside, short, rebounded by Levesque. Long pass out for Stora, and that might do it right there. That might be the nail in the coffin with only 3.15 left. The lead has ballooned to 16. 
Now they're gonna think about the three, wouldn't you think? Definitely. That's the only way they're gonna get back into the ball game right now is a couple quick threes. They throw it away and back comes Levesque. Lewis is not yet in the bonus yet either, so they really can't use that to their advantage as of yet. So Thornton might think about actually committing a couple of quick fouls to get them close because you might have to foul and hope that they miss some of these one-on-one -on -one situations. Yeah, they're two fouls away. Yeah, so they might want to waste that next one in a hurry. Cook in the corner, chance for a three, but passes it up. Langelier, Gresty, and Matt Cook can all shoot threes. Gresty for three, in and out. Can't get it to fall tonight. Both him and Shea Demons having an off night. Levesque, nice dish to Fennessy. Fennessy puts it in. 64-46 now. 2.34 left. Gresty coming inside. He draws the foul. The score really isn't the type of ball game we've witnessed tonight either. This, is, this has been a very good ball game. Lewiston is, is, is indeed a very good high school basketball team. And Thorn, Thorn played hard. They played him very tough. Thornton, just something. I'm not sure exactly what it is away from being a good team. I think what they lack is true composure. At times they have it, but it's very sporadic. It comes and goes, and I think they lack that composure that it takes to be a winner in this league. Just a little more experience, a little more coaching of slowing it down and speeding it up you know, at the right times in a contest. Because there are times you want to slow it up and there's times you want to speed it up. And you've got to know when to make the right decision. And Thorne just seems to lack that right now. Right, see, a game, th this is a key game for Thorne. A game like this, that's the type of game that gives them that composure, gives them that confidence, and they build from there and go on from there. And who knows, you know, a win like a, a Lewiston, uh, a South Pole, those, those wins put you in the tournament. Exactly. This is a win tonight I think they could have had. I mean, they were not that overmatched by Lewiston. They just missed a lot of bunnies, a lot of chances, a couple of turnovers here and there. The ball wouldn't fall for either Shea Demons or Craig Agresti tonight. Normally those shots go in for them. And that really hurt them because if they could beat a team like this, the confidence they gain, the heel points, they need a game like this and how many more they'll have this season, it starts to decrease as the season progresses. Right. You, you let these chances slip by and you may never get another. Gresty makes them both at 64, 48, 222 left. Lewiston now just needs to work the clock for an easy shot. And Coach Dalloway instructing his team to do just that. Fennessy drives the paint though, draws the foul, and just misses the bucket. Looking at Thornton Academy's schedule down the line after tonight's contest. They play Biddeford Friday night, another home game right here at Linnell Gymnasium. Then on Tuesday, the 15th, they're away at Westbrook. And then home on the 18th, Friday against Sanford. That's another possible win. Sanford not playing that well this year. Sanford's had a down year so far. They really have, and we expected so much for them. They got so much height, they got a couple of good outside shooters, but it just hasn't materialized. They got a, they got a fine coach in Doug Roberts, and I'm sure he'll, uh, if he can turn him around, he will. Exactly. Lewiston makes one of two. Thornton brings it up. Trailing 65-48. LaBelle now with the basketball. Inside, LeBlanc tries to get it to Logan Morang. Bad pass. Charlie Duncan. Loses it. Kicked by Matt Murphy will be Thornton's basketball. And the game against Westbrook next Tuesday on the 15th, that's away at Westbrook, a game that you really don't expect Thornton to win because it's such a tough place to play at Westbrook. That's got to be one of the tougher home places to go and travel to. Yeah, the, the pit is. Uh, in fact, I'm not sure if they're playing their home games here this year. They've done, uh, as I understand, they've done some construction work over at Westbrook High School, and I think they're playing their their home games at SMVTI. I'm not sure of that, but. That could be a major still. plus actually for Thorne Academy because like you said, the pit as they call it, is such a difficult place to play. Small, very rowdy home crowd. They're always in the game. And Lewis and just, I mean, Westbrook just has so much confidence playing at home. Still a, a team like Westbrook with great, 
great tradition. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to matter where they're playing their ball games, you know? That's true. Both teams emptying the benches now. An attempt to just run this one out. Lewiston taking control in the third quarter and then holding on to post their third win of the season. They'll move to three and three. Thornton will fall to two and four. And a nice save right there by number 30, Toby Federico. Morgan Morang, nice run and move. Use the left hand, but it wouldn't fall. He'll get two shots, though, at the free throw line. The better teams in the league this year, Bitterford, Bonnie Eagle in York County, and then South Portland once again, Chevers, Westbrook, Deering. They're yeah. kind of in that six and seven spot, you would say. Daring's in, Daring's in the tournament pitcher. Morang makes the first. And he gets them both. 65-50 now. 55 seconds left. Adam Pipcorn, number 40, the quarterback of the Lewiston Blue Devils. Still got a senior year ahead of him. He's a very fine quarterback. Looking rather awkward, though, out on the basketball court. And a three for LeBlanc. Comes up short. Pipcorn with the rebound off for Grenier. Grenier slows it down around the back. Working the basketball, throws inside for Pipcorn. Stolen away by Thorn Academy. Raymond breaks out with it. Got to get it back for a three. LaBelle will take it. And an air ball. Where's our crowd yelling that? Oh, yeah, that's the that's the away side that would call that one. We're down to 15 seconds left. LeBlanc with the breakaway. Can he finish it off? And Grenier says, no way. I'm not letting you have the easy. Molests him from behind. Intentional. Call the intentional. Certainly. They use that rule in high school basketball? Intentional? Does it count for anything more? It's automatic two shots. You get the ball. There you go. And that's exactly what he's calling. Good call by the official. I don't know if LeBlanc can dunk it, but uh, he's got enough height. If he has some leaping ability, he might have went up for that one. See, there's no need of that at this stage of the game. Lewiston's got the game in hand. What they want to do, they want they want the clock to run. They don't exactly. want to stop the clock. Exactly. So really not a smart play by Grenier. And I think Coach Dalloway is telling him that right now, although LeBlanc does miss the pair. But like you said, you just want the clock to run, end it graciously, and go home with the W. Very cold night. You want to get the bus fired up and get home as soon as possible. Coldest night of the season. So far, it's down in the single numbers. Not looking forward to heading outside myself. No, sir. And the final shot, just off the margin. And Thorne Academy fights valiantly through the first half, but second half falling apart. They fall to Lewiston by the score of 65 to 50. You're watching high school basketball on CTV 30 as the teams congratulate themselves at center court. Jay Hopper and Mike Newman will be back to wrap this one up right after this on CTV 30. Welcome back to Linnell Gymnasium in Saco. Jay Harper along with Mike Newman. The final score, Lewiston Blue Devils 65, Thorn Academy 50. Mike, kind of one of those games, a 15-point win for the Blue Devils, but should have and could have been a much closer game. Uh, Thorn played a very, very, very closely, uh, uh, non-indicative of the score. Uh, yeah, they were outscored by eight in the first half. They were outscored by seven in the second half. Lewiston is a very good ball club, though, and you're going to see them in the tournament come tourney time. I think a big factor tonight was Craig Agresti shooting along with Shea Demons. A couple of good outside shooters usually get their buckets to fall. Tonight, they just really couldn't buy a hoop. Yeah, it's tough when you have two scores that both have off nights. You can get away with one guy having an off night, but when they both have an off, not off night, you really can't do much. And Lewiston, on the other hand, the second half, they came out, took control. 
Number 32, J.P. Fennessy. We uh, started to make fun of him, or I did, and then he just lit up the basket. I knew he must have been a good outside shooter if he's taken that many, or else you'd like to think he was. And he finally came through with uh, four threes in the night and 22 points for Lewis and leading the way for them. Yes, he had a very big night. You might want to attribute that early coldness to it is the coldest day of the year and he might have had a, a you know a little high time warming up good point i'll just run down lewis's scoring here real quick uh real quick excuse me matt murphy had six points on the evening aaron fontaine four for the blue devils jp fennessy as we said he had 22 tonight their leading scorer jason fuller the fullback for the lewiston blue devils had six joe levesque chipped in with 19 he had a big night a lot of offensive boards he's a good player as well Corey Storer, their point guard, had eight points tonight, and that rounded out their scoring for the Blue Devils. For Thorn Academy tonight, Mike? Well, Guy Langelier led the way with 12 points, followed by Craig Agresti with 10. Matt Cook and Shea Demons had eight apiece. J. Lowe had six. Uh, Morgan Morang threw in two at the end, and Brent Raymond and Steve Xanthopoulos Zanthopol each had a pair apiece. We said his name pretty well tonight. You could just go with the X, but uh, they had troubles on the boards. A lot of bunnies wouldn't fall from. It's just one of those nights where things weren't falling for the Trojans. A tough loss. Now, Friday, they're at home once again against arch rival Biddeford. Biddeford, a very good team this year, playing well in Class A. What do you expect from the Trojans in that one? Well, this would have been a big win for Thornton. It would have given a lo uh, gave them a lot of momentum going into Bidf Biddeford Friday night. Uh, Biddeford's a very, very quick team. Thorne's going to have their problems with them. Again, they're going to have to be patient, and Craig Agresti's going to have to have a hot hand that night. Biddeford's very quick. They, they full court press almost the entire evening. They make a lot of turnovers and a lot of easy buckets. I think a big key, too, will be to break the press without too much trouble. Right. Thorne had problems with that in the Christmas tournament, uh, hence they lost by about 20 points, I believe, in the Christmas tournament when they played. And if they can break the press, I think... You know, you could see a very, very good ball game. You know, you, you throw out the, you know, you throw out the records anyway. When these two, these are, you know, these are, it's a great rivalry. You know, the Battle of the Bridge. Of late, though, Biddeford has had a decisive advantage. Uh, you know, Ron Cody's been, been at Biddeford for for years now. Thornton's been through a few head coaches in the 80s. Uh, Margani, the last on the list. Uh, but I, I anticipate a, a hard-fought battle. All right, I want to thank Mike. Thank you for coming on. Mike Newman doing an excellent job tonight. My pleasure. Little little, little butterflies, you know, a little jittery at, at first, but it was all right. Good. Uh, hopefully you'll come back when we do another game. Okay, I'd love to. All right, I want to thank my cameraman tonight, Mark Cantor, our producer, Tony Alamo. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Wish Thorne Academy the best of luck through their season. We'll be covering more games in basketball as well as in hockey. Thorne Academy having a good year in ice hockey. We're really enjoying ourselves here on CTV 30. Once again, thanks for tuning in. For my cameraman, my co-partner here, Mike Newman, I'm Jay Harper saying so long, have a good week, and we'll see you soon.